and always a reminder for myself, ana abdukul ajeezu da'ifu miskinu zalim jahal but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that we got asked again that why in, in other people's meditation, teachings they talk about connect to the Divine within or, or breathe and just connect with the trees, the oceans. And in tariqah and, and the Islamic understanding of tafakkur and contemplation, why does it require a shaykh and the connection with the shaykh? And alhamdulillah that that question came at the same time of this month and, and all the talking about the mirror. And the, the reasoning for that is, is that what we've been talking for this whole month is that if you sit to meditate to get a higher understanding, to get a greater reality of the Divinely Presence and you don't incorporate the understanding of the nafs and shaitan, anyone who sits just by themselves is going to be sitting with their nafs and shaitan. And the only thing that they're going to learn is the nafs and shaitan because the nafs and shaitan will sit with them and push to them all their desires and, and everything is nafsani. To reach to a higher level and a higher plateau it requires a mirror of truth. So anyone just sitting with their nafs, oh what should I do, oh you should do this and how am I you great and that was the cartoon. That mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? And that had a deep reality, we talked about that many years ago. That you know these, these cartoons and these shows that shaitan puts out, Rahman has a hidden message within everything. And the majority, 99% of the world is with that mirror. They look to a magic mirror of their nafs and shaitan and say, well mirror, mirror you know who's the best one of them all? You are, you are the best. You don't have to change anything, you're perfect, you're great, you're beautiful, you're fantastic. And that lying mirror tells us everything we want to hear, not what we need to hear. And that mirror is uh, something in our life that just continues for everything and begins to teach us what we want, what we want, what we want, what we want to hear and what we want. And it just keeps exploding the nafs and the desires and the desire becomes something that grows way out of hand. And tariqah comes to open the truth about the ego and shaitan. And the last person that we want to sit with is with ourself. And the last one we want to hear from is shaitan. That self is the one that has made all the problems already and that's the, the life that we're suffering from is this nafs and shaitan desire that has completely sort of destroyed our lives and following our desires and the whole way is built on reaching towards the mirror of truth. And that's why when we learn first how to make the connection, visualize the connection, asking for the connection to be present, the shaykhs to be present, Ya Rabbi please keep me connected with all those whom you are with and whom you love and you favor, Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And this is Ayatul Qur'an, so this is not somebody making something up, Allah is saying, I'm with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, they are the best of company to keep. So we ask Ya Rabbi then keep me in that company at all times. So I can't be with Nabiin but the Nabiin must have connected to Siddiqeen. So who are the great Siddiqs that we want to role model our life from? And these are the great holy companions and Ahlul Bayt. 
And these Nabiyeen and Siddiqeen they made immense amounts of shuhada. These are mushahidan, those whom they followed them and their hearts opened. And that's why we have to find a shaykh whose heart is open, not a beginner and not somebody reading from something, but someone whom has been trained by all his shaykhs. Not one born into tariqah that you know you can, I can say that my father is a doctor therefore I'm going to practice medicine. That has no relevance who you're born to because we're all Ahlul Bayt and all descendants of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the highest affiliation. But if you don't do something with that and you're not trained with that and you haven't opened the reality of that then you know congratulations for you. That lineage that you talk about is something that is a responsibility and an achievement that one has to achieve. So that we accompany those whom they have been certified, they've been tried, they've been tested and their Ahlul Basira that their hearts are open and that they live by that system. They are strongly connected to the great Siddiqs who their fires and their madad is continuously dressing them and those Siddiqs their hands are tightly and firmly in the hands of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of this mushahida and the hearts that witness and that they have been martyred in the sense that their desires have died, their personality has died and their seed has died and what you see of them now is a completely different reality, a tree with many, many fruits. The fruits that the people eat from these shaykhs they become salihin. So when you accompany a shaykh that bears fruits from this garden of reality, everyone who eats from these fruits becomes salihin. Because these are the fruits from the gardens of paradise and from the gardens of Sayyidina Muhammad They eat from the fruit and when they say they eat from the fruit means that they accompany them, they took their knowledges, they were trained that make the knowledge to be something real, that your character has to be real according to these knowledges. That you can't be angry, you can't be stingy, you can't be stealing, you can't be doing all of these corrupt characteristics and that your life is to fight those characteristics and let the knowledge to be real within your heart. If it's not changing you then that's something else, the fruit is, is not bearing its fruit within your reality. And the whole tariqah is based on, I want to eat those fruits and I want to be from that reality. And my whole fight is to come against my bad characteristic and never to fight other people. So your, your stick is not on people but your stick is to hit yourself. Not to attack anyone but attack only yourself in everything. If you can do that then you are someone whom has lowered themselves and extreme amounts of testing. Allah will send testing from many, many different locations and, and, and personalities and you continuously, continuously ripened until Allah describes you as rushed. What did Nabi Musa want? He said, I want to be taught a knowledge of a higher reality so that I can become rushed, ripened with these haqqaiqs. With all the reality of speaking to Allah So it means this has a, is a great understanding, doesn't matter who you are and who you think you are and who you think you're related to. This is someone whom's Kalimullah who's speaking to Allah He's humble enough to take a path in which he wants to meet a servant of Allah that may teach him of higher realities. And as a result I've become rushed, I've become ripened, I've become something that been dressed by the sun and ripened. Means that the awliya they grow the reality, they grow the student, they train them, condition them, teach them and then this audience in the presence of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad sweetens them. 
So it means that once they become sweetened and ripened fruit, they have a sweetness with them, they have a sweetness in their character. As a result of that sweetness they have a, a juzbah and a magnetic attraction, people are attracted to this sweetness of this fruit because of its character, its khuluq, its knowledges that became real for that servant, that raised that servant. And as a result of the khuluq and the character of that servant, the sweetness, it draws the focus of people towards that reality. So alhamdulillah this is the tariqah way of, of tafakkur and the Islamic way is that I want to meditate with this mirror of truth. I don't want to follow my, my bad desires and sit by myself following every inspiration that comes to me. I want to be trained and when I sit that I want to be in the company of these pious servants and those whom Allah has favoured. And when I sit with them and meditate and ask for their fires to be upon me, their light upon me, that their, their madad to be there, even if I don't feel it or see it, I know that the madad and the light is there. And then when I want to understand my inspirations and my actions and my character, that light begins to push the correct understanding within the heart, begins to push the heart to understand not to do the bad things, not to act the bad way, not to follow one's own desires but to fo follow the higher reality inshaAllah. We pray that Allah inspire more and more for us as this is now running towards the completion of this year and we pray that Allah grant us the reality of entering into Zul Hajj and that the hijrah and the oceans of faith to be completed and all of the real realities of the realities of hajj and all that Allah gave to us to achieve of the realities of hajj and all of its realities in the perfection of faith. We pray that Allah dress us from those, bless us from those. This is the time in which the year is ending for us, a year it doesn't end at Christmas and New Year's Eve, we have nothing to do with that. Don't plan your life based on a, a, a system of disbelief and satanic understanding. Our life it begins and ends with Zul Hajj. So means that, that year is coming to an end, do all that you can do, do all goodness that you can do. Those are the 10 days in which to clear your accounts with Allah of what you owe, what you wanted to do, what you wanted to accomplish, what you wanted to achieve. We said before the qurban is not something of a distribution of meat, these are the charities and the work that we have to do to distribute. But when Allah described that we sacrificed and with a tremendous ransom, means what was about to happen to Sayyidina Ismail as salam of sacrificing his life for this reality, that his father was sacrificing his family but the child which is the Muhammadan haqqaiq, the Muhammadan haqqaiq comes from Sayyidina Ismail because from that light of self-sacrifice comes Muhammadun Rasulullah come to teach. We're not a people who give away our property. But in the end when Allah calls for us we will give ourselves gladly in that way. And that's the haqqaiq and the Muhammadan haqqaiq. So when Allah describes Ayatul Kareem in reference to Sayyidina Ismail's uh, sacrifice, Allah describes the qurban as a tremendous sacrifice. That this giving of a qurban of, of what it carries of realities, what difficulties it takes away from insan of, of hardships and, and what their inability to achieve in this year of marifa, of all the sins of their bad character and their bad actions. Allah doesn't want in this way of marifa to close the account on the servant so that they don't achieve what they needed to achieve. So it means there's a tremendous reality in the qurban, the qurban that every badness will be put into that animal as a, as a way of that animal reaching its marifa because the animal is sacrificing and the, the energy of that animal 
it's actually the Isra and Miraj, the Miraj for that creature is this action for Bani Adam because all of creation is trying to serve Allah's favourite creation. So by them giving themselves, carrying these burdens, taking on these, these difficulties, this is their miraj in which how Allah will elevate the reality of their life. But for insan and for people, don't miss that light, don't miss that reality, don't overlook that as something small. But Allah's own Divinely words is that this was of a tremendous sacrifice. We pray that Allah opens that reality of that sacrifice and takes from us all our difficulties, all our badness, all the incorrectness within ourself and puts that into the qurban so that our Arifah and our Hajj and this year of Hijrah to be accepted by Allah's Divinely Presence, to be accepted by Sayyidina Muhammad to be accepted by Ahlul Bayt and Ashab al Nabi and awliyaullah fi samai wa fil ard. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha.